Crusoe in England by Elizabeth Bishop A new volcano has erupted, the papers say, and last week I was reading where some ships saw an island being born. At first a breath of steam ten miles away, then a black felk, basalt probably, rose in the mate's binoculars and caught on the horizon like a fly. They named it, but my poor old island still unrediscovered, unrenameable. None of the books has ever got it right. While I had 52 miserable small volcanoes I would climb, with a few slithery strides, volcanoes dead as ash heaps, I used to sit on the edge of the highest one and count the others standing up, naked and leaden with their heads blown off. I'd think that if they were the right size I thought volcanoes should be, then I had become a giant. And if I had become a giant... I couldn't bear to think what size the goats and the turtles were, or the gulls, or the overlapping rollers, a glittering hexagon of rollers, closing and closing in, but never quite glittering and glittering, though the sky was mostly overcast. My island seemed to be a sort of cloud dump. All the hemispheres left over clouds arrived and hung above the craters. Their parts throats were hot to touch. Was that why it rained so much, and why sometimes the whole place hissed? The turtles lumbered by, high-domed, hissing like tea kettles, and I'd given years, or taken a few, for any sort of kettle, of course. The folds of lava, running out to sea, would hiss. I'd turn, and then they'd prove to be more turtles. The beaches were all lava, variegated, black, red, and white, and gray. The marbled colors made a fine display, and I had water spouts, oh, half a dozen at a time far out, they'd come and go, advancing and retreating, their heads in cloud, their feet in moving patches of scuffed up white, glass chimneys, flexible, antunated, sarsodotal beings of glass, I watched the water spiral up in them like smoke, beautiful yes, but not much company. I often gave way to self-pity. Do I deserve this? I suppose I must. I wouldn't be here otherwise. Was there a moment when I actually chose this? I don't remember, but there could have been. What's wrong about self-pity anyway? With my legs dangling down familiarly over a crater's edge, I told myself pity should begin at home. So the more pity I felt, the more I felt at home. The sun set in the sea, the same odd sun rose from the sea, and there was one of it and one of me. The island had one kind of everything, one tree snail, a bright violet blue, with a thin shell crept over everything, over the one variety of tree, a sooty scrub affair. Snail shells lay under these in drifts, and at a distance, You'd swear they were beds of irises. There was one kind of berry, a dark red. I tried it one by one, and I was apart. Subacid, and not bad, no ill effects. And so I made homebrew. I drank the awful, fizzy, stinging stuff, then went straight to my head and played my homemade flute. I think it had the weirdest scale on earth. And dizzy, whoop, and dance among the goats. Homemade, homemade, but weren't we all? I felt a deep affection for the smallest of my island industries. No, not exactly, since the smallest was a miserable philosophy. Because I didn't know enough. Why didn't I know enough of something? Greek drama or astronomy? The books I read were full of blanks. The poems, well, I tried, reciting to my iris beds, then flashed upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of what? One of the first things that I did when I got back was look it up. The island smelt of goat and guano. The goats were white and so were the gulls, and both too tame or else they thought. I was a goat too or a gull. Ba 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 and shriek shriek shriek. Ba shriek ba. I can still shake them from my ears. They're hurting now. Question shrieks, the equivocal replies, 
over a ground of hissing rain and hissing ambulating turtles got on my nerves. When all the galls flew up at once, they sounded like a big tree. In a strong wind, its leaves, I'd shut my eyes and think about a tree, an oak, say, with real shade somewhere. I heard of cattle getting inland sick. I thought the goats were. When Billy Goat would stand on the volcano, I christened Mount Despair or Mount Despair. I'd time enough to play with names and bleat and bleat and sniff the air. I'd grab his beard and look at him, his pupils horizontal narrowed up, and express nothing or a little malice. I got so tired of the very colors. One day I dyed a baby goat bright red with my red berries just to see something a little different. And then his mother wouldn't recognize him. Dreams were the worst. Of course I dreamed of food and love, but they were pleasant rather than otherwise. But then I've dreamed of things like slitting a baby's throat, mistaking it for a baby goat. I'd have nightmares of other islands stretching away from mine, infinities of islands, islands spawning islands, like frogs' eggs turning into polywogs of islands, knowing that I had to live on each one and every one eventually for ages, registering their flora, their fauna, their geography. Just when I thought I couldn't stand it another minute longer, Friday came. Accounts of that had everything all wrong. Friday was nice. Friday was nice, and we were friends. If only he had been a woman, I wanted to propagate my kind. And so did he, I think, poor boy. He'd pet the baby goats sometimes and race with them or carry one around. Pretty to watch. He had a pretty body. Then one day they came and took us off. Now I live here on the island. It doesn't seem like one, but who decides? My blood was full of them, my brain bred islands, but an archipelago has petered out. I'm old, I'm bored too, drinking my real tea, surrounded by uninteresting lumber. Knife there on the shelf, a writ of meaning, like a crucifix. It lived. How many years it did it, did I beg it, implore it not to break? I knew its nick and scratch by heart, the blue blade, the broken tip the lines of wooden grain on the handle. Now it won't look at me at all. The living soul has dribbled away. My eyes rest on it and pass on. The local museums ask me to leave everything to them. The flute, the knife, the shriveled shoes, my shedding goatskin trousers. Moth has have gotten the fur. The parasol that took me such a time remembering the way the ribs should go. It still will work, but folded up. Looks like a plucked and skinny fowl. How can anyone want such things? And Friday? My dear Friday died of measles 17 years ago, come March.